Hello everyone. So I hope you're going to be joining me every Friday for a watercolor challenge. This one is being hosted by my group page on Facebook. If you want to join the group and have whatever you paint uh, critiqued or just get some tips or even just share in the conversation about watercolor, we're over there on Facebook. So be sure to come and check that out. Also, this lesson is one coming out of the spontaneous watercolor class. It is spontaneous floral, so I'm doing a lot of really cool stuff in there. But, you know, there's not just florals in there. There's actually some landscapes and some other really fun um, compositions that you might want to learn. So if you want to take a class and you like the way I teach, definitely come over to the spontaneous watercolor class. It's over at JacquelineJacks.com, as well as my sketchbook class for beginners and just all kinds of really cool, fun classes. All right. So today's challenge is going to be for a flower, just a spontaneous, loose, beautiful, easy to do flower that we do in two perspectives. So it's important because over time, when you do flowers, you will learn that there are a lot of different ways to do them, right? So here's some examples. So you can see some of the flowers here are on their side. Some of them um, you might be facing you. So we wanna try and do two different perspectives, like these two or these two, or you know something that are going in different directions as well as the stems and the leaves. So that's the challenge. I'm gonna show you a very easy way to get this kind of result. So whatever watercolor paint you're going to use, that's not really as important as the paper. I'm gonna use 100% cotton paper and let me just like note this in telling you that if you don't wanna buy a watercolor pad, right? And by pad, I mean something like this, like the uh, Fabriano 100% cotton watercolor block. If this is too much money, I paid $19.99 for this and it has 20 sheets in it, which I absolutely love because it's a block. So it's already like all gummed up and you just have to loosen the side to get it off, right? But you can paint on here. I usually do like little squares and stuff and, and practice watercolor for the classes in this. But at the same time, I actually, in the granulating watercolor class, I was able to show you guys how to make an accordion sketchbook like this. And this one, in the granulating class, we made at the beginning of the class out of one sheet of paper. So what this is, is it opens up and it produces 30 of these pages of 100% watercolor paper so that we can do the granulating class for only $8. I'm about to paint the next one here. So $8 a sheet and you get 30, 30 sheets in this accordion sketchbook. You don't, it doesn't require any tape and no glue. So if this is something you want to learn to make, the granulating sketchbook class for beginners is definitely you. You, it's just all over you. But you can do it for eight dollars. It's amazing, right? You can just make, get those big sheets of paper, and make those accordion sketchbooks. So you don't have to pay a lot for your watercolor paper. You just have to know how to break it up and use it. Okay, so let's go ahead and do our quick lesson. I'm going to be using uh, Daniel Smith's Imperial Purple. And Imperial Purple has a really beautiful quality. It's granulating, but also in its tint strength, like the lightest strength that it has, it actually has got like a pink to it that I think is so pretty in some of these florals. So the first one off to the side here, we're gonna do the easiest. We're gonna just do a easy little roll. And there's se several ways to do this. One, you can just go ahead and take your brush and literally just roll it okay just like that that's a great start right there so simple and what brush is this this is the two point this is the 20 Tintorito 1407 this is a synthetic quill made in Italy and I love these I actually have so many of these at this point I just love them and I recently got one that was really cool this one, it's really, really super long. And you know what? I've been having such a good time with it. It's really fun for um, larger sheets of paper. This is the 2-0. I 
love it in any case if you are interested in these brushes i will give you a link and if you want you can go and um, get a 10 percent discount on me all right so now now that you've done this right you just did a really really light wash of color we're letting it dry and as it dries we're going to come down here and we're just going to put a nice little dot right there of our watercolor and then with the tip of our brush hair on the end of our brush with the tip of our brush we are going to connect this dot to the um connect this dot to the petals of our flower just like that and if you haven't waited too long like this side obviously i waited too long so that's okay because these happy accidents are wonderful I'm just going to give it one more roll. And the reason why I like doing that is see how the first roll is lighter than the second roll? So simple, right? Who would have ever thought? And then we just pick up a little more of our watercolor and we're just gonna tap it right there. And this is gonna be the shadow side of our flower. Now these little areas that are really, really light, we can actually wait on that before we do anything else. And that will give us a little more structure on our flower. Whether you decide to fill it in or not, it's kind of neat to leave it so that it doesn't just become one big blob of color, you know? So that's when we're leaving some white space. And as this dries, we're gonna be able to go and play with it, but we're gonna leave it and let it dry and go on to the next one to give us some time. So now I'm gonna take my brush again, and this time I'm gonna start at the center of the flower. And we wanna put a nice bit of color at the center. And then coming out, you're gonna lay the tip of your brush down and you're just gonna pull it out and lift it up and look at that. A beautiful beautiful petal now we're gonna take this point of the brush because we want a, a little more of an edge we're gonna lay it down and we're gonna roll right there and that's one another petal right there flip our paper around tip of the brush and roll and just let it just flop around because you want this as organic and natural as possible then I'm gonna take a little bit more of my watercolor and I'm gonna put a little more strength in the center and I'm gonna tip my page ever so slightly to let it bleed forward. So by tipping the paper, what it's doing is it's using whatever watercolor paper we have. So if it's really nice watercolor paper, it's gonna explode like that. See that? Isn't that beautiful and we're not going to touch it we're just going to leave it because it's already got different qualities going on in this and i love the little veins on the petal then on this here i'm going to kind of go along my edge and just kind of give it a little more color look how pretty that is and because we're going to keep it tilted this part is going to keep feeding some veins into the flower and this part here is going to be the edge of the flower in that beautiful, beautiful tone. So now let's go back over to our first flower and we're just gonna give it a little more color. You can see it's not quite dry yet because it is bleeding and that's great. Up here, I'm going to give this tip just a bit more color. And because it's tilted, it's gonna go and flow. Look at that, it's just gonna flow for me. Yay. And then I'm gonna let it bleed back and just follow the organic path. Now look at how pretty these are. Don't you just wanna do this right now? You excited? Okay, so now let's take a clean brush. A clean brush by meaning dip it in water and then dab it off on your paper towel just a bit. And this is the point at which we think, okay, what do we know about this watercolor? Have I ever painted with it before? I have, so I full on know that there is a dry back here, that when this dries, it's gonna be much lighter than we see here. And until the paper dries, we don't really know what we're gonna get. But at the same time, if I wanted to create a little more white space, I could just touch it back just like that. And I'm doing this so that you know you have this option. 
So we're just gonna touch it back just a little bit. We're not gonna take a lot because if we take a lot and there's a big dry shift, then literally we will have taken away too much color because we still want our beautiful flowers, right? So I'm just kind of going in a couple little spots and creating that little dry shift there so that it shows off the granulation and it also just has, you know, something kind of different. Now, one other thing you can do with this and I want to show you is you can take the same color and we can create um, another flower like here just by rolling our, our brush kind of like in this little semicircle, right? Roll it over on that side. I love that. Look at that. It's so, so beautiful and organic. And then I'm going to create a little center. Take some more color. And we're going to come off to the side here, join that center and come off here. And the reason why I'm doing that is because this is a flower more on its side. So to accentuate so that it makes sense to you, the center, we're actually going to do this right here. We're going to let that dry and then we're going to fill that. And I'm going to do it here with a lot of color. Okay, so let that bleed forward. Now I'm going to show you something kind of cool. So you're going to wet your brush with some clear water and you're just going to add a little bit of clear water to this to encourage some blooms in the flower. And then we're just going to leave it much like you leave salt just to see what it does because I think you're really going to love the results and it shows you more about granulation as well as more about what you can do with watercolor. Now while these are drying before we go any further we're just going to give them a little second to dry and again, if it hasn't moved to where you want, now I'm looking at having a little darker area here, so I tilted this. I wanted a little darker area here, so I tilted that, right? And if you want to feed it even a little bit more, um, you can just by touching it before it's completely dry. And you'll end up with that beautiful, look at that beautiful dark and light bleed. I think it's really, really lovely. I'm actually gonna put a little dark on this side again, because remember, this was my shadow side, and I'm gonna put a little more here and here. Love this, it's beautiful. Okay, and we're gonna let it dry. So now let's take our brush again. Um, I can actually do it with this brush easily or we can get out the fancy brush, which is the new one that I just got, <laughs> which is very, very long. And we can pick up a little bit of, um, how about we use that beautiful green shadows by uh, White Knights. It's a gorgeous granulating color. And I'm just going to, from here, just draw my stem right down, just like that. And here, I'm gonna actually touch the base so that some of that can go in if it wants to. And we're just drawing some loose stems, whichever way you want. Look at that, so easy. I find the longer the brush, the better the stems are for me. You know, and I like very, very long, thin brushes. And then I can just kind of touch them a little bit just to thicken it if I want to. I think it's lovely. Now, if I had more room, I would do the leaves with this, but this is too long to do the leaves. So let's rinse it out. And we're going to hang it upside down because I don't like to hang my brushes the other way. We're going to hang them this way. Just going to hang that up and let it dry. Um, and for the leaves, I'm going to take, we're going to go back to our two. And did I, hopefully I rinsed it out. I'm gonna take some of this color. And the first leaf, very, very easy and organic. We're just going to tap, get that little thin, and 
lay down the belly of the brush and bring it up. Very, very simple. I'm using very diluted version. I think the next one I'll do a little, little more color. Now remember, all leaves don't go the same way. So let's turn this one down. Get how cool that is, right? Can you get any easier than that? And then we can take a little more color and we can actually drop it into the base of the leaves and let them bleed. I think they look lovely that way. It actually kind of mimics that organic nature that they have, you know? So from here, I'm actually going to take this and twist. It's kind of neat like that. You can fill this side a little bit. Let it bleed. And on this side, out, lay the belly down, and flick it short. Look at that, we got another leaf shape. See how easy it is? So you just have to be kind of creative, you know? adding a little more watercolor every once in a while. You can see some of the purple is bleeding into this and I love it, it looks so good. This would be a beautiful greeting card. And then over here, um, if you wanna start this way, you can also start this way. And do like a little heart on the top, just like that. So that's, I think, enough leaves for that. I think that looks great, you know? We're not even gonna, push you to do any backgrounds right now. Now you can see how this is starting to dry. You see what I mean? So if I were to take a little water and just experiment a little bit in pushing some of this color, and I think you really need 100% cotton watercolor paper to pull that one off. I don't know that that's gonna work with cheaper paper, just because um, on cheaper paper, the watercolor sits on top anyway. So it probably will just like, freak out and you know just run the watercolor right off the page you probably won't end up with anything there but the more water i add to this if you noticed the more it granulates and the more interesting effects it has and i really believe that like the purpose of having different watercolors is just for the effects i think the effects are incredibly beautiful and i love them so now as this dries, there are so many things we can do to it. And if I wanted to even just kind of speed dry it a little bit, I could take a Q-tip or a little piece of paper and just press on the area that I want to dry faster for a couple of seconds and lift. And you can see that, don't do this with toilet paper because toilet paper will leave all kinds of weird things behind. But I can actually create some really neat little modeling effects in my watercolor without really disturbing it just by quick drying it this way. You see that? Now I find this technique again works better on 100% cotton paper. So now we're gonna take almost full strength of our watercolor and I'm going to paint the center and I'm going to just kind of flick it out this way just to give that really nice effect in the center and you can see here that the darker I go right here where I dried the more this side comes forward See how that happened? So by adding the dark behind and drying this front piece a little bit, I now have that popping forward. Same thing is going to go here. I'm going to take the full strength and I'm just going to pop some pieces up and down. And that's just to create a little more interest in my flower. Over here, again, full strength. Full strength, have a little tiny bit of water on your brush, not a lot. So we're gonna shape this flower just a little bit more. So say um, I wanted this to be my center, right, the base. So I make it a little more strong and then I'm just going to flick 
this side view up here. So I'm creating a, a deeper, darker petal. Right like that. Look at that. And so now that's the inside. We're going to lighten it just a bit. And I'm just going to roll just a bit of color down so that we just see a little hint of it. Isn't that lovely? There you go. So now we've done three different perspectives on a flower, three different ways, and we made some leaves and we did some fun stuff. All right, go off and do this with whatever watercolor you feel like painted with today. Experiment with your paper, experiment with your brushes. You know how to roll, watch this video over and over so that you can see the different techniques I taught you. And if you like the way I teach and you want to learn even more of these challenges, you can access all of them in the Spontaneous Watercolor class. I hope you guys will come and join me and pay attention to this YouTube channel every Friday as we share a new lesson in watercolor. Happy painting!